A wireframe render is one of the most important elements to showing off your model on the internet. So obviously, you want to make it look good. Let's explore how. Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of CGC Weekly here on the CG Cookie Blender Training YouTube channel. This week, we're going to be investigating how to create good wireframe renders. So let's start off by asking, why do we even show a wireframe render? What are people looking at wireframe renders for? Well, the first thing that comes to mind is to look at your topology. Is it well constructed? Is it nice and clean? Or is it really dirty because you just uploaded a sculpt? It's really important to have good topology, and having a good wireframe render to show off your good topology is one of the best ways to either sell your model or to make it look good in your portfolio. Additionally, a wireframe render helps people gauge the approximate poly count for your 3D model. That way they know whether they should be using it in a game, for example, or if it would be better off for something that involves ray trace rendering. So while we're creating our wireframe render, we have to find some way to show these off. I found two ways to do it that I think are really good, so I'm going to share them with you. Alright, so here in Blender I have this teapot 3D model loaded up. And if you guys don't know what this model is, it is called the Utah Teapot. It's kind of a uh, monument in CG history. Uh, but anyway, we won't get too far into that. I basically just have it loaded up with a very basic clay material on it. Nothing too spectacular, nothing too special. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and create a wireframe render for this. So one of the most important parts of a wireframe render, in my opinion, is maintaining the look that it is still a 3D model. We just don't want to render like a solely wireframe model. We want to render the wireframe on top of the existing materials. And this ends up looking really cool. So in order to do that, I have two different methods and those are the two that I mentioned earlier. The first one we're going to do is just solely through the use of materials. So I'm going to split my window here and open up the node editor. And you can see that um, the nodes I have pulled up here are pretty basic. It's just a principled shader with some textures going into the principled shader. We have a mapping node and we have a generated or generated texture um, output coming out of a texture coordinate node. And those basically build up the entirety of the texture for this clay pot. So the nice thing about cycles is it actually has a wireframe node built in. If we come into the input tab of our add menu here and select wireframe, you can see that we get a wireframe output. And if I just add just a basic, for now, a diffuse shader, hook up the factor output of the wireframe into the color input of the diffuse and the BSDF output into the surface input, then you can see just like that we now have a wireframe on our model. And we can change the thickness of the, um, the wireframe by changing this value here. So 0.005 will make it just a little bit thinner. Um, I might even want to go a little bit lower than that, like 0.003. And you can see that we get this wireframe generated. Now, it's kind of confusing, I guess, right here, right now, because uh, it looks like it's transparent, but in fact, it's not. It's actually uh, black and white. It's just because I had the background set to black that it kind of looked like that. Um, and we don't really want this. Like I was saying, we want our wireframe to lay over the top of our existing material. So I'm going to just revert it back to here. And what I'm going to do in order to achieve this effect is to mix together the existing shader and just a white diffuse shader using the factor output of the wireframe, to, um, or the wireframe, I don't know what to call this, wireframe input, I guess. Yeah, sure. Anyway, I'm going to add a mixed shader node. I'm going to plug the diffuse shader into the top and the principled shader that we were using from our previous material into the bottom. And we'll plug the shader output into the surf or in the surface input of the material output. Then we'll hook up the factor output from the wireframe into the factor input of the mixed shader. You can see that now our model is mostly white, but we can see those lines. So that means our principled shader and diffuse shader are mixed up here. So we'll just swap them in positions. And just like that, we now have a wireframe sitting on top of our existing model. And we can actually change the color of the wireframe too. Say we want it to be, you know, weird cyan teal color. We could do that. Or we could do something like maybe make it a dark gray or something like that. Maybe up to the scale a little bit. Uh, that way it's a little bit clearer and you can do all sorts of things with this. Now, one thing you should notice is that this does triangulate the mesh. Um, so if you do use quads to model and you really want to show off these quads, this is not the method you want to use because everything will be automatically triangulated because you can see in the actual wireframe view here, absolutely nothing is triangulated. It's all, you know, just regular squares. But when we do go into rendered view, everything gets triangulated. So that is one way to do it, but really, it's kind of flat. It kind of lacks a lot of detail in geometry. So I'm going to reset the material back to its default here, just like that. 
and we'll get rid of the node editor because we won't need it. So anyway, let's go ahead and look at the next method, which adds a little bit of extra detail to our mesh and also helps to retain that quad style uh, that a lot of people like in their 3D models. So what we're going to be doing here is utilizing the wireframe modifier, but we're going to be doing that on top of the already existing geometry. So in order to do that, first I'm going to duplicate the teacup, right? Or sorry, the tea, tea kettle, tea, teapot, teapot. That's the word I was looking for. Um, so now we have two of these teapot models stacked right on top of each other. Now with one selected, I'm going to come into the materials tab, delete the teapot material and just add a basic diffuse material. And I'm just going to name it diffuse. You can name it whatever you like, or you can leave it unnamed. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to come into the modifiers tab with that diffuse teapot selected, click add modifier and select wireframe. And what this does is it generates wireframe geometry around the existing mesh. So our diffuse teapot has a wireframe modifier, but our other teapot is still just the regular teapot. And we can change the thickness up here to like maybe 0.3. Um, and you can see that it actually adds an extra layer of geometry on top of what we already have, which is a really cool feature, which really kind of helps sell that wireframe, oh hey, this is geometry look. So if I enter rendered view here, you can see it doesn't look too different from what we had before, other than the fact that things aren't triangulated, but you can see some slight shading on the actual wireframe outline. And if I change it up to like 0.5, you'll really be able to see it. Um, so it's kind of cool to see that. Uh, it definitely adds an extra layer of depth. And again, we can do that same thing that we were doing before. We can change it to be, you know, bright blue if we wanted to. Or if we <laughs> really wanted to, we could, you know, make it a principled shader as well. That way it has PBR materials. Now, this does have some slight drawbacks, especially if you're working with a very high poly model. Uh, sometimes this method will fail to, well, you can actually kind of see it here. Um, it'll fail to reconstruct certain details because the wireframe will be overlapping itself. And then you might lose detail that you would otherwise have if you would, if you had just used the material method. Uh, additionally, it doesn't triangulate things. And although quads are nice, sometimes people are in fact looking for triangles. It's up to you to decide whether your model should be triangulated or if you should just, you know, advertise it as quads. Anyway, these are my two favorite ways to do wireframe renders in Blender. If you guys have any extra tips on wireframe renders, be sure to leave them down in the comments below because, you know, I'm always looking to improve and I'm pretty sure everyone else is too. If you guys enjoyed this little quick tip here on CGC Weekly, head over to cgcookie.com now and hook yourself up with a subscription because there's tons and tons of other Blender related content for you to absorb and learn from to become a Blender mastermind person. Yeah, that's a thing. 